Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Hunter Fan TV. Back at another video. The Ravens lose to the Giants 24 to 20. The Ravens are finding new and creative, uh, impressive ways to lose games, and we're going to talk about it right now. So, pretty much, this game, the Ravens should have had sewn up. They should have won, but I'm going to give my credit to the New York Giants to start off, all right? The New York Giants were the better team, especially in the second half. Um, they played mistake-free football. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot. They made the plays when the plays needed to be made. Um, as the game went along, they got stronger. Can't say that. Can't say any of those things about the Baltimore Ravens. Um, Daniel Jones had a okay game. 19 for 27, 173 yards, two touchdowns, two big touchdowns. I give him credit where credit is due on that. Um, Saquon Barkley was pretty much bottled up the entire first half. Didn't really do anything. Second half, he got loose. Ended up with 22 carries, about 83 yards, and a touchdown. Um... This Ravens defense played pretty well, I would say, first half, right? Uh, but this is not really about the defense. This is about the team as a whole, that the Ravens just shoot themselves in the foot. They find ways to blow games, whether it's on the offensive end or whether it's on the defensive end. All right? You can start week two versus the Dolphins. Blow that game. You can see the Patriots game. They probably blow that game if it's not for um, Kyle Hamilton coming behind Nelson Apollo with that strip. Bills game. Blow that game. And now here we are again. The Ravens are have a 20 to 10 lead in the fourth quarter. They Mark Andrews scores a touchdown. And we're and I'm thinking, all right, listen, defense, let's, let's go ahead and get a three and out right here. Let's get the ball back to the offense, make it 27-10, and officially put this game to bed. No. Giants go down the field score. Ravens get the ball back. Um and and you know, we gotta be honest here. We gotta be honest here once again. Lamar Jackson makes possibly the worst decision in his career, all right? First of all, bad snap, or it's either a bad snap or Lamar Jackson wasn't ready for the snap. Somebody was still running in motion. Can't remember exactly who it was. Um, might have been Tyler Walsh. I don't remember exactly. But they were running in motion. Didn't look like Lamar was ready for the snap because snap could have been bad, whatever. It bounces back. It started down, bounces back. Instead of just throwing the ball away, punt, so, so we can punt, just get the ball back to the defense. Lamar decides to throw across his body in the double coverage to Patrick Ricard. You can't make a bad play worse, all right? Once the snap went behind you, once you looked downfield and didn't see anything, the play was dead. It was over with. It was finished. So, throws it across the field and double coverage to Patrick Ricard. And obviously, Patrick Ricard cannot make a play on a defensive back. He can't. That's not what he's here for. That's not ever what he's going to do. Um, but let's even talk about how the Ravens get into that situation. Third and one, the Ravens have a chance to put the not, not well, I'm gonna say put the game away, but they have a chance to take off even more time off the clock. Third and one, Lamar Jackson does a great QB sneak. He doesn't go right up the middle. He kind of droops back, goes off to the left, bang, first down. What do we have? Penalty uh, on the pit on the field, I believe, on Ronnie Stanley. So now that's when we get to that third and six. All right. The Ravens are finding new ways and creative ways to shoot themselves in the foot and lose games. You could say this is culture. You could say it's undisciplined actions. I don't know. But what I'm going to tell you is that the, the fact is this team isn't good. They're bang average. They're, they're a bang average football team. And this really isn't having anything to do with a uh, wide receiver play or whatever. Uh, that, that's a factor in it. They, they need another guy. That's a factor in it. But the simple fact is they're finding ways to lose games. Like the Giants get, the Giants should have been put away. All right. The Ravens scored 20 points. So let, let, let's break that down. Justin Tucker misses a field goal. That's three points because he's tough. We expect him to make the field goals today. Right or wrong. He's human. We can't make them all. But we expect him to make those field goals, right? Okay. So that's three points Ravens miss. That 20, I'm sorry, the two field goals that they had were really close in. They should have been able to score down there in the red zone. So now we're talking about a chance where a game could have been 31-10, 31-17. With probably, we'll say 31-17 because when the Giants scored that, that, that touchdown to uh, Bellinger, it's about, um, I want to say like six minutes left in the game, something like that. So we can say that the game could have been 31-17, pretty much over and done with. But because they can't execute in the red zone unless they're throwing the ball to Mark Andrews, this is what we get. The Ravens were averaging... 10 yards, almost 10 yards to carry as a team. Kenyon Drake had his best game as a Raven last week. And what does he do this week? He has an even better game this week. The Giants could not stop the Ravens running game at all. The run lanes were massive. They couldn't do anything with it. 
The Ravens had no problem moving the ball in between the 20s. No problem. But when they got to the red zone, they choked. Uh, if they couldn't throw it to Mark Andrews, they didn't know what to do. And not even that. All right? This, this, this is on Greg Roman right here. Greg, you're a run-game guy. Why do we get down to the red zone and we don't run the ball anymore? What is, this, what is the system that? What is the logic in that? Why are we checking back and throwing the ball? And some of this has to be on Lamar Jackson as well. He has the, he has the power to make audibles at the line of scrimmage. You know Kenyon Drake is hot. You know Kenyon Drake is going. Give him the ball. You know this offensive line is cooking. The run lanes are massive. Kenyon Drake is running damn near untouched. The touchdown that he scored, he didn't get touched on. Ben Powers pulls around, cleans up the linebacker. Then nobody touches Kenyon Drake on that. And that was about 30 yards out, so that's not in the red zone. Um, and then the second they scored a mark, obviously, you know, nice little fade, a uh, little slot fade, whatever. Andrews obviously comes down with it. Mark dropped a couple too. Mark Andrews dropped a couple passes. Now the one in the uh the one that would have been a touchdown, he dropped. Uh it was a tip pass. It went through the defender's hand, came on Mark fast, whatever, but you expected to make that catch, okay? Uh at the end of the day, that's this is the big thing with this team. They are finding ways to lose games. They aren't finding ways to win them. They aren't having the story of, yeah, we're overcoming uh, everything that's happening to us and we're winning these games. No, they're they're finding ways to lose football games. All right? This game versus the Giants, the Giants, like I said, played well. I'm going to give them all their props, all their credit. Good for you. Um, It should have been a dub. It should have been an easy one. This game was lining up for that. The Ravens really... Dominated this game for large portions of the game. Large portions of the game, they dominated this game. And now we get down to the fourth quarter, two minutes left, a uh, minute 40 left, and it's time for a money job for Lamar Jackson, okay? And he gets the snap before the line is even collapsed. He has, he has time. I had to look at the all 22, but it looks like Prochet got open on a little slot fade, whatever, right? I'm not even talking about that. Before the pressure even comes in, Lamar is getting happy feet. In the pocket, and he's looking for where to go. Stand, stand tall, make the throw. Now came on Thibodeau, knocks the ball out of his hands, fumble. Now the Giants get to, 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 to put the game away, really. But the Ravens still have three timeouts, right? All right, Ravens, cool. You got three timeouts. Let's make three tackles on Saquon Barkley. The Giants kick, a, kick three points. It's 27 to 20. We get to go down field with Lamar Jackson, still have a chance to score the touchdown that's going to uh, tie the game up, right? wrong now all of a sudden the Ravens can't tackle Saquon Barkley is literally two hands on the ball huddled up in the middle not trying to score literally walking towards the line of scrimmage they can't tackle him he spins out gets the first down and falls down an embarrassing end to the game he didn't even want to score he wasn't when he spun out he wasn't even trying to make a play bruh they let it do who did not want to score, spin out of two tackles. How did how does that happen? How do you let that happen? This comes back to the same thing I've been saying. The Ravens have not played a full 60 minutes of football as an offensive defensive unit. And I'm not talking about dominating guys who start to finish hold, or yeah, hold them to a shutout. I'm saying that consistency, smart play, it hasn't been there. This is the issue with this game right here. This is the issue for the Ravens season. When the offense is going well, the defense is allowing yards. When the defense is playing well, stopping the runs, stopping the passes, doing their thing, the offense can't get going. They're never in sync at the same time. It's either one or the other. One side of the ball is playing good. The other side of the ball has no clue. They're clue. They don't know what to do. And this is unfortunate because the Ravens had some players who made some real had a real good game today. Calais Campbell, great game today. Justin Matabike continues. It's not even a breakout no more. Justin Matabike is a good football player. Another good game. It doesn't matter. Listen, and I'm not trying to pick on him, but Patrick Queen, I didn't hear his name once today. This is a game that's dominated by a running back running the football, and I don't hear my inside linebacker's name at all? That's not good. They, um... In the second half, in particular, in late, well, late first half, second half, they definitely picked on Pepe Williams. He's a rookie, so I'm not even going to give Pepe Williams really any uh, um, 
in all that smoke. I'm really not. All right, he's a rookie, and they and they picked on him. That's what teams do. They they, they pick on rookies, and they got some completions on him. Baby Williams also made some plays. All right, I'm not even going to really get on him like that about it. But this game is another disappointing game. It's another game where the Ravens allow a team that they should have been clear of. Two, three touchdowns clear of. Be in the game because you can't convert in the red zone. You, you're, kicking, you're kicking three when you need to be scoring seven. J- Justin Tucker's missing field goals. Like I said, hey, look, we expect that from Tuck to make the field goal. All right, it's 56 yards, I know. And I'm not even getting on Tuck because it's not his fault. It's not his fault that the Ravens lost this game. I mean, you know, whatever. The bigger issue is that this team... Um, they're finding ways to lose football games. That's probably going to be in the title of this video. Finding a way to lose. Okay. Another one. Another another situation I remember. I believe this was the third or fourth quarter. Uh, the, the Ravens stopped the Giants. Get them to a fourth down. Fourth and maybe like a one. Odafi Owe gets a unsportsmanlike conduct. Now it's a first down for the Giants. Things like this can't happen. If you want to be a team that's going to go deep, if you want to be a team that's going to play, I'm, I'm about to go watch this uh, Bills and Chiefs game. If you want to be a team that can play one of those two teams and actually have a shot to win the game, you can't make these kind of mistakes. And that's what the Ravens do. They constantly make these kind of mistakes. They constantly make these kind of bonehead, idiot decisions. And we can say it starts at the top of management. That's fine. I'm not going to defend John Harbaugh. I'm not going to. Something needs to change. And I can't say, oh, it's Greg Roman. Oh, it's Mike McDonald. It's a whole collective effort as a whole team. This is the one thing they do as a team. Find ways to lose. Everything else can be individual. But boy, do they find ways to lose as a team. This <laughs> so the Ravens are now 3-3. Three and three. I believe the Bengals beat the uh, the Saints. I, I don't I don't have the score in front of me, but they they were winning last time I checked. The Steelers beat the um, the Steelers beat the Bucks, or, or they were winning versus the Bucks last time I checked. So the division is creeping up. It's creeping up, and the Browns might have lost to the Patriots, but the division is creeping up. The Ravens are not far ahead enough. The Ravens are playing down to their competition, like I said they would. Um, in the game preview, that's what I was worried about. The Ravens playing down to the level of competition. Daniel Jones didn't do anything spectacular today. Saquon Barkley didn't do anything spectacular today. This game was there to be won. And the Giants defense, honestly, they knew the Ravens knew the blitz was coming. I thought for the most part, Lamar Jackson handled the blitz pretty well. He moved around, he scrambled, he escaped. Sometimes he was even making off-platform throws inside the pocket. So, to me... The Giants didn't really do anything as far as the blitz. Wink, Wink had a... I wouldn't even say Wink Mardell came back and had a great game coaching. They, they really didn't affect the Ravens' offense, if I'm being quite honest. The Ravens killed themselves. And that's the main point. The Ravens have to find a way to make other teams beat them. Every single loss this year... I can't say the other team won the game. I can say the Ravens lost it for sure. They lost it versus Miami. They lost it versus Buffalo. And they lost it versus the Giants. They haven't allowed a team a, beat, a, a team to be better than them and beat them. Right? The reason I said the Giants were better than the Ravens today is because they played pretty much mistake-free football. Low penalties. Um, no bonehead plays. Daniel Jones kept the ball safe. All right? And that's, that's the difference in games. It's as simple as that. Let me see what I can find. Let's see if they got the penalties on here. Okay, perfect. The Giants had three penalties. Three. You know how many penalties Ravens had? Ten. Ravens had ten penalties. And that's the story of the game. The Ravens had a 406 yards of offense. The Giants had 238. The Ravens had 200 yards rushing. The Giants had 83. The Ravens dominated this game and lost. Just like all of their losses this year. They dominated the game and still managed to catch the L. Simple as that. Give me your thoughts on the game in the comments. Another disappointing game for the Ravens. Another disappointing week. Another week where this team implodes. Um, another week where this team finds a way to lose and embarrass themselves out there on Sunday. 
Uh, this team may well, very well just be bang average, and that's what we just got to deal with until uh, something changes, all right? Uh, but that's my thoughts on it, man. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.